<laughs> it's true. Okay, so I want to talk about these things, and this, maybe we'll sort of examine a few fun things here as well. So, but I do have this kind of one ridiculous idea. So this is usually the, the, the layout, right? So we'd have, and I know this is taking a long time to get through this, this time around. Um, these presentations, it depends on how many we have on the team. Reports, four pages, right? So you give these two talks, da da da. Nice to make an online visualization. GitHub is a good place to put things. Teams, teams of three, and then um, two or three. And then, you know, it's, and it's always been this range, and, and this, so we can still do all of this. Um, but it can be, you know, particularly if you're an undergrad, like taking on an interesting paper that's just emerged. A lot of the things we read in the paper shredder are interesting papers to kind of get at. They're probably wrong, you know, because they're new and exciting and got lots of things about them. Uh, so you can just like dig into something that exists or get all the way out to producing uh, some novel research. Anyway, so I was kind of hoping, and this is always, I'm just having, I'm putting this in here, so this is an important thing for me. I mean, there's a, there's a blog post that I have about this, um, but the idea that you have to work at all scales, right? So that's just sort of a presentation story there. Okay, so what I want to make about stories, and I know we have some work in here that's gone in that direction, um, if possible, right? So there are lots of different sources of things around. This has been a, we, I had a student work on this for a while, um, but we went, you know, we ended up going in a slightly different direction. But this just, this is just a really difficult problem, like just counting the metaphors in, in a text and what type they are, right? Um, whether they're spatial or, you know, because we have a lot of left, right, up, down metaphors. We use them all the time. We have sensory ones, you know, some, you know, an idea is hot or it stinks or something like that. We have sensory ones. But we don't even really know the abundance. And the thing about metaphors is this is the structure of our knowledge, basically. This is how we structure knowledge. It's the scaffolding of knowledge. If you, I think it's still true if you go to Wikipedia and look at the uh, metaphor entry. It's not that long. And 0.72 is it is how we think about things. You know, like to start with, it's like, oh, it's a nice way to write poems or whatever. Da -da 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 -da. And then it's like George Lakoff, this is how we structure knowledge. Yeah. OK, so that's a big deal. There's lots of interesting stuff here with um, Obviously, everyone loves memes now, but memes mean, don't mean what they used to mean. They don't mean what Richard Dawkins meant them to mean, which was like cultural units. Now they mean GIFs and photos and things like that. I've had middle schools explain to me what memes are. It's pretty, it's pretty funny. Uh, obviously, we have lots of data on w works of literature. We have um, Half a Trust, which is a big, we, you know, there's Google Books, very problematic, actually. And I want to talk about that in, later in the class. Um, Story taxonomy, this would be fantastic. I mean, maybe we can get this out of genres a little bit, maybe. But things like there's Kill the Monster, Romance, Journey, there are these big fundamental kinds of stories, right? Kill the Monster is Beowulf, Harry Potter has it, you know, da da da, da. Um, all sorts of things. Okay, so that's just some pieces. There are some interesting things around. This is just a little bit. This is plots from Wikipedia. Someone's put them all together, right? So these are synopses of movies in particular. Millions of books on the, the VAC. Um, we've had Sean working on that. IMDB, so uh, that's interesting, right? This, is, this was under one of the data sets used for the original Small World uh, work, which we talked about in PUX. Uh, and it was a very naively kind of thing to do. Naive, right? We've talked a little bit now about um, bipartite affiliation graphs, and that's exactly the game here was movies and actors. And then just, if actors are in the same movie, then they have a link, right? And so you make that network. So it's going to be a bunch of very connected things. And then you do it over many years, and you just collapse it all, which is obviously a very questionable thing to do. But a lot of the early work, people still do this. They collapse networks over time, right? Obviously, they're temporal. Some works deal with that. And it a, remains a very exciting future for networks, is trying to actually do a good job with the temporal um, behavior of the thing. It's much easier if you flatten it and then you say, you know, here's the structure and I can make a picture of it and so on. 